Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on The Fight Game. In this video, we look to Asia, to the man they call the monster, the Japanese destroyer, Naoya Inoue. At 27 years old, he is just beginning his prime. He is undefeated with 19 wins, 16 coming by way of knockout. He is also a three-weight division world champion. He's in the lighter weight division of 118 pounds. He began boxing at six years old when his father Shingo Inoue taught him footwork. Six months later, his father gave him boxing gloves and Inoue trained every day after school, sacrificing his social life for the sweet science. When fans think of Japanese boxing, they now think of Inoue. He's often been described to have both speed and power with incredible mental strength. I think we all know another boxer from Asia who fits the very same description. He is likely the best boxer we've seen from Japan since fighting Harada. The best boxers we've seen come out of Japan are often in the really lightweight divisions, but as far as Japanese boxers go, it's been decades since a man like Inoue has come onto the scene. He has a strong attitude toward boxing. He stays in shape between fights, which will provide great longevity to his career. He's a ferocious boxer. He's able to fight in many different styles. He has captivated the world of boxing with his insane power, but make no mistake, Inoue's power does not come without excellent footwork and boxing capabilities. From head to toe, Inoue's fundamentals would seem to be implemented by a perfectionist. His technique is efficient but also effective. Every punch thrown is thrown with a violent snap. All of this in conjunction with determination and willpower has manifested the unprecedented results we see from him in the ring today. Welcome to this video here on The Fight Game, where we take a look at times where Naoya Inoue has been an absolute monster. There is no better place to start than the professional debut, of which he made when he was 19 years old. Japanese viewers saw Inoue land a straight right hand to the body in the first round to drop his opponent. Inoue showed a great jab, sturdy footwork, and high output of punches. The fourth round saw Inoue plant his feet to land a hard left hook to the body to end the fight. The body shot was executed with perfect technique, adding lots of wonder to the Japanese fans on how good this fighter really could be. The following fight saw Inoue dominate his opponents with high-paced attacks and high-level precision. Inoue won his fights in such a dominant fashion that the idea of him fighting for a world title soon was not out of the question. His respectful humbleness was also appreciated by Japanese fans who were quick to support him. Inoue fought Adrian Hernandez for his first world title in his sixth professional bout. The weight was at light flyweight, which is 108 pounds, the third lightest weight division in boxing. Inoue showed great ring generalship. When unleashing attacks, he was sure to vary the heights from the body to the head. And in the sixth round, Inoue dropped him with a right hand over the top of his guard. Hernandez was not fit to continue, and Inoue won his first world title. Inoue would go on to defend his newly acclaimed world title. He beat down his opponents over the course of most of the fight. He looked rather unstoppable in this fight at times, deciding to box, but then to explode in sinister nature with fast, ruthless combinations. I think the special thing about Inoue is that he holds both power and speed. And when you combine those two qualities, you get punches that have a real thudding, explosive effect. Inoue was too much for his opponent, and the fight was stopped before any more unnecessary punishment was taken. After defending his belt successfully, which is something that's greatly respected in the boxing world, he decided to move up and weight to the super flyweight division of 115 pounds to contest for an additional world title. Inoue's massive power surfaced in the first 30 seconds of the fight when he landed a hard looping right hand, then followed up with another. The first shot did all the damage, and it was the second shot that simply toppled his opponent, who had been hurt. Round 2 saw Inoue land a brutal left hook to the liver to finish the fight. If you haven't noticed already, Inoue seems to hurt his opponents initially to the head, but then he likes to go downstairs to finish his opponents off with body punching. Inoue had become a two-weight world champion in only his eighth fight. Inoue would stay at super flyweight for quite some time as he defended his title. As time continued, Inoue of course improved. 
He fought boxers shorter and taller than him, while seeming to have little trouble in dealing with them. Also, take notice of how Inoue is very grounded with his feet and legs when he throws his punches. With the insane power he can generate by doing this, he's able to quite literally punch through his opponent's guard and drop them without even hitting their face. Inoue can stand and trade shots too. Having a good defense when stationary can be something you rely on when pressure gets high in a fight. He also uses a really good trick when in the pockets where he drags his opponent's hand down and lets go of a hook. A key quality of Inoue is his remarkable conditioning. When he gets in a tough fight, he can rely on the work he's done in the gym to overcome his opponents. This wouldn't be possible without the insanely hard and intense training he does. Inoue, having obliterated every opponent he faced in his world title reign, felt the need to move up another weight division to the bantamweight division of 118 pounds. He took on Jamie McDonnell for another world title. In round one, Inoue bulldozed his opponent to the ground, then pushed his opponent to the ropes, landing consecutive blows, dropping McDonnell, and winning the bantamweight title to become a three-weight division world champion. Having become a three-weight division world champion, Inoue was presented with the opportunity to take part in the World Boxing Super Series. The tournament was contested at the 118-pound level, and it was the perfect platform for Inoue to perform his skills to a worldwide audience. The fight started with both boxers taking center stage. Both fighters looking for openings, not much happening. Then his opponent attacks, but Inoue's superior footwork got him out of trouble. Then he stopped and landed a great uppercut. A few seconds later, Inoue got inside his opponent's stance, then dropped him with a hard 1-2. An incredible first round knockout. The knockout blow was landed in a dangerous position for Inoue, with his lead leg inside his opponent's lead leg. However, Inoue quickly took advantage of the positioning by turning his upper body into the right hand shot, knocking his opponent out. Inoue showed the world that he has really strong one-punch power in only 70 seconds. Next up, we've got the semi-final of that same tournament, when he took on Emmanuel Rodriguez. The fight started with Inoue on the back foot. He got caught with a few shots, but then landed a clean right, then showed great defense. Building on that, he then continued with another flurry of punches. Inoue on the ropes then again showed some really slick head movements. The first round saw both fighters land clean, but with Inoue landing the sharper, more eye-catching punches. The second round saw an incredible three-punch attack to fly his opponent's head back. Shortly after, Inoue knocked his opponent down with a massive left hook. His opponent got back up, but Inoue was sure to drop him again with a lethal body shot. His opponent returned to his feet, but Inoue dropped him a third consecutive time with another left hook to the liver. A sensational second round knockout for Naoya Inoue. No wonder they call him the monster. We fast forward to the final where he took on Nanito Denaire, an incredibly experienced four-weight world champion veteran from the Philippines. This was a great fight. It was the craftiness of a legend versus the strength and power of a young monster. While before Inoue had appeared to be a monster in an aggressive procedure, in this fight we saw him dig deep and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a man of much more experience than himself. Other than, of course, his knockout power, Inoue's jab is one of the most utilized weapons in the ring, and sometimes an overlooked aspect by most viewers. His jab dictates the pace of the fight and keeps him in charge of when the action happens. Inoue is an alert boxer. He's always aware of what his opponent is doing, and he collects this data by probing and inspecting with his jab. While sure Inoue showed great skill in the Denaire fight, he also showed great grit and determination. His combinations were let go with mean intention, a quality we don't see in most fighters today. We've seen Inoue perform great against most opponents, but many wondered how he'd react if he was dragged into deep waters. Inoue showed that he's able to swim in such waters by taking hard shots from Denaire, remaining game, and displaying a warrior heart. Inoue doesn't just want to win the fight, he wants to knock his opponents out, which of course is always welcomed by the fans. Inoue, after a long, hard-fought bout, won the fight by decision and won the World Boxing Super Series Tournament. Naoya Inoue is one of the most exciting fighters in boxing today. He has accomplished so much already at such a young age, and it's exciting to think about what he's yet to achieve. 
Inoue has proven that he's got natural power. We know he's a good boxer, but we've yet to find out if he's a great boxer. That brings a close to this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on the Fight Game.